twin stick vertical scrolling shooter hybrid with a cinematic flair sounds cool, but it's also a lot of fun to play. When I was a kid, we used to walk to school uphill both ways and in the snow. Afterwards, we'd come home to our Atari and play Space Invaders. This game was awesome, so awesome in fact, it had a couple of sequels for systems like PlayStation and Game Boy Pocket 20 years later. However, all of this has changed, and nowadays you can jump on your Segway or in your Uber, get home as quickly as possible, plop down in your Lazy Boy chair, and start playing Signy, All Guns Blazing, a highly refreshing modern take on the old classic genre. The objective is simple, move around the screen, avoid being hit by dozens of incoming attacks every second, shoot and blow things up to earn points, upgrade your ship to complete more stages or even harder difficulties which will earn you more points and further upgrades, and finally beat your high score. Hold on though, because you can also shoot things on the ground. There's multiple layers of attacks and enemies, so you need to quickly adapt to what's happening and this feature is very engaging. For fun, let's take a look at what the expert mode looks like. So you can easily toggle the difficulty here, and you'll see that they recommend easy for skill building, reduced fire from the enemies, you get additional revives, medium has no description essentially, and hard is for skilled players seeking an extra challenge. Essentially, there's gonna be more bullets and they come faster. So let's go ahead and try this on hard. Now this is my first go on the most difficult setting, so let's see how long I can make it. I can't imagine I make it all the way through. I've got just minimal upgrades on my ship so far. But certainly you could continue to play, upgrade more parts of your ship, and then you should have an easier time and kind of work your way through the difficulty. So there's a feeling of progression there as well, if you're interested in that. Otherwise, just play the difficulty that you have the most enjoyment on. So, so far, just trying to avoid everything. You can allow yourself to take some hits. So I've got a bunch of shields there. So you don't have to necessarily grab all of them at once. You can kind of save them and then pick one up as needed. This is kind of useful if you're looking to get more value out of your attacks is the first boss on the stage. I get to move around and avoid everything. Uh, you can see I am taking a fair amount of damage already. I do know the mechanics. So far the mechanics have not changed at all, just the faster speed at which they claimed. So I need to avoid multiple projectiles. I do get hit once there. If I can even make it through, unfortunately, go into the beam. That's really bad. I don't want to do that at all. That big damage to your ship. Hoping to actually finish the boss off. Before that next wave, and there we go. So you see there's enemies on the ground now, and you can target them on the ground. This is super engaging. I really like this. This just really makes the gameplay fun. And then enemies are going to come from kind of the sky level as well. So you have to adapt and react to this, and that's the part that I really enjoy. And then you can switch back enemies on the ground. I've not been able to kill these larger ones yet. I imagine I need some ship upgrades. You can't do enough damage to take them down before you kind of scroll vertically to move on. You can see it's about 80% at this point and it's going to start pushing me forward. So again you can come back to improve your scores as your ship becomes stronger. The game also includes some cutscenes so you can follow along in the plot and there's even a co-op mode if you like to play with a friend. You could say I'm a total beginner to this genre, there's next to no relevant experience, and I've almost beat the first level on medium difficulty in just a few tries. I'm pretty sure I could have beaten it if I tried several more times as I improved the mechanics and controlled my vehicle. After swapping to easy, the level proved no challenge at all. Alright, so you can always go back and improve your score. This is part of the progression or even the replayability of this game. You'll see I have 30,000 points for the stage score, and on the second stage I have about 400,000, so a much better score here. I'm going to go back and replay this first stage and do the solo mission. Now at this point I'm still just kind of pushing through, trying to get as high as possible on the easy, and then I'll kind of work my way up to medium and just keep going. Now I've improved a ton just in the short amount of time I've been playing this game. As mentioned, this genre is completely new to me but I definitely feel like there's a large amount of improvement already. So don't worry if you're a pure beginner, you can certainly jump in, even if it's the easiest difficulty, and just work your way up. As you improve your ship or hone your own skills, you'll just get better and better. Now I should decimate that 30,000 score, I believe, because I've just played a lot <laughs> in a few days here because it's been fun. But in general, my ability to kind of dodge the attacks is a lot better. And on the easier difficulty, you'll notice that those projectiles coming at you are much slower as well. Here's a first boss, which we actually managed on the hardest difficulty as well. Should be no trouble here, and dodging the attacks as you go around is pretty simple here. Once you have control over your character to a fair degree, you shouldn't have much difficulty avoiding the vast majority of that damage. Avoid these beams as well. I'm gonna get on this side this time, just for a little more room. 
Here we go again. Take one hit, but again, we're not really getting overwhelmed. And hopefully take him down. I'm going to try to keep the shots on him so I can get him in this go. Perfect. So the faster you take these bosses down, your score will be better. And because your time's better. So keep that in mind. And although I'm pretty confident I will beat this level, what I'm really doing here is pushing for a much better score. So I can then improve my ship and then push higher difficulty or higher stages from there forward. So again, just solid reasoning to kind of go back and play things. It adds to kind of the value of the game. And it's kind of fun to see if you can beat your score. And just practicing the levels that you now know the mechanics is enjoyable as well. Kind of put what you learn to the test. See here, I already have 40,000 points. Imagine that 30,000 score. I must have died towards the end. So as long as I can survive the whole way through, I should get a substantially better score. One of the upgrades that's available actually doubles the amount of projectiles to ground units, and that one's pretty appealing to me. I think I may pick that up fairly soon. It's a lot of large ground units, which I can't quite take down yet, and I feel like that would really enhance my score. And in the later stages, there's a lot more of the swapping between, say, ground and air really quickly. So you'll be shooting the ground, you'll be shooting the air, shooting the ground, and it goes back and forth like that. So I really want to have that additional damage when possible. And this is being the beginning stage or the very first stage. You don't see a ton of that. You kind of have a fair amount of time in order to take out the ground units or even the air units as well. But it's a lot more fast paced and kind of preparing for that working your way up to it as well but I feel like my clear speed on the ground units is pretty slow compared to the air units. When you're in stages like this as well, kind of like these dog fights, there's a lot of enemies, a lot of projectiles coming your way, but you see how bountiful these shields are being dropped. So you can take some damage here. A good offense is a strong defense here. You can just kind of keep working your way through, replenishing your shields as needed. And you can aim your cannons as well. And there are varying angles between the extremes. So it's not just straight, extreme right, or extreme left. You can actually vary this to more subtle angles. But I find in general it's easiest to just kind of do the extremes while you move and kind of spray the screen. But perhaps once you get really adept at the controls, you could kind of track on the target and move it slightly as you move as well. I'm just not there yet. I'm working on it. Overall, a lot of fun though. Really love the engagement that you get from swapping between ground and air. Kind of that multi-layered and these dog fights are entertaining nonetheless. I never get tired of just endless amounts of enemies. So here's the next boss coming. I'm gonna shoot some of these targets on the ground while we're waiting for it to come up. It is possible to actually pass this boss without killing him. And I've noticed that a couple of times as I've replayed this level and working on it even on the medium difficulty. So I want to make sure that I kill him by getting enough direct damage on him in the second phase. And that'll make more sense when we get there. But this first phase, I'm going to just work on these arms. Primarily just shoot one, try to get the first one down, and then I'll work on the other one. Kind of just makes sense, right? Focus the target. When I go up to avoid these lasers, I am actually going to shoot the ground, and then I'll come back and work on the arms again. Grab that over there, and that's just going to allow me to hopefully get some more points. So I'm not quite reaching me yet, so I'm going to continue shooting on this arm. Some air units as well, if I can avoid them. All right, here I am. I'll shoot on the ground again for a couple seconds, maybe get some points. Everything goes down. And then we're going to have kind of like a transition phase. So I'm again going to shoot on the ground while I'm waiting for this boss now rise up higher and send two more arms up at me. At this point I can hit the boss itself and I'm going to primarily focus on this as much as possible and it does shield itself periodically so again I'm shooting on the ground and it is shielded so I'm waiting for that to end and then I'll get back on the boss as soon as that shield ends so the lasers from the front of it kind of go away. As much time on this as I can. Get out of that just in time, I think. And eventually this boss will just kind of walk away. So you definitely want to make sure you get him down for the additional points that it gives. Or her. I don't want to assume the gender of the giant robot alien. But I am stuck in there. Fortunately, I had enough shields. And let's 
to get this guy down. That should replenish our shields. And then we can move on, so. One more boss to go, and I think time-wise, maybe three or four minutes, I think, so we gotta kinda keep the focus up. Again, another one of these dog fights, fire fights, however you wanna term it. I'm just gonna kinda shoot, blow things up, and collect these shields as they drop. I really don't have to worry about avoiding anything. Certainly not trying to get hit, but in general, I don't have much difficulty here as long as you collect these shields. And don't pick them up at once, right? You know, kind of space them out with a second or so in between. So yeah, I just grabbed a whole bunch of them because I was clunky with my controls. But if you were better fine-tuning, you could just kind of pick up a couple at a time. Increase your survivability. Should make it through either way. At this point, they're just everywhere, it doesn't even matter. Through, so I can probably shoot those things on the left if I were quicker or had more damage. Because I got more upgrades, I can probably actually shoot down here. Alright, take some of those out for additional points. Just a lot of things you can interact with on the various levels. Makes it fun in ways you can kind of continually look to improve your score. Your little kind of secrets like that. Still firing away here. Here looks like my camera is broken. Pull my camera off so you don't have to look at a frozen me, but we can still go. Fortunately, I did not die. I need to replenish my shields though. I imagine I got hit. Alright, I'm in good shape again. Might have affected my score by not taking everything down, but. Nonetheless, here we are. like this and then you can kind of move back or down on the screen it helps kind of avoid to so see some of the enemy's projectiles are going away from me at that point or just in directions that don't matter and back to some ground targets a lot of ground targets here on one side. Everything just moving. Kind of move with my targets. You do have the ability to change which target you're locked onto, and I kind of only toggle that with the joystick if needed. And tons of projectiles. Pick up whatever I can here. So there I just kind of tog toggle it onto another target. Those big ones, I just don't have enough damage at this point to take them down, but well, gives you a reason to come back and play the level again for a better score. But at this point, I'm looking to kind of make some quick upgrades on my vessel. And keep climbing through different stages and possibly even move up to the next difficulty. I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm kind of ready for that. Don't think it'll be too long. I think that you really do learn this style of game fairly quickly. There's not a whole lot going on. You're just trying not to be hit and hitting them. So in terms of the overall strategy, it's pretty straightforward. You know what you need to do, you just need to kind of improve your muscle memory and hone your skills. I think I can actually get this down. But I'm kind of stuck here waiting for the screen to move forward anyway, so we may as well try. air unit. So if I had that upgraded, the double projectiles, I would actually get one down. Maybe more, because everything on the ground would have 
die twice as quick as well. Well, maybe not twice as quick, but faster. Uh, I do think that upgrade is pretty appealing. Seems to me like you really want to kind of get ahead in the points and then it'll kind of keep snowballing favorably for you. Getting the extra points, clearing the levels, all going to be really good for your overall progress. And there's just an overwhelming amount of projectiles on the screen. Ran into a whole bunch of them there. And it went below me. I'm not sure I want to toggle the switch to him right now. We're so in a solid position here. Be arriving to the final boss of the stage pretty soon and I mean all the levels are somewhat similar they have you know kind of new nuances to them where you may kind of go through different tasks or strategy with them you can shoot around here and I'm sure eventually you probably see new enemies and mob sets and so forth but But this gives you kind of a general feel to what you should expect as you're going through. There are a lot of these guys. And I just need to stay alive through the level because I have a really high score compared to what I've had previously. It give me an enormous amount of points. And here we have the final boss of the first stage. any damage onto it. It looks like I am actually doing some damage. I did 1% damage to it as it came up. I'm just going to avoid these lasers if possible. Taking damage. So something's hitting me from off the screen. Not entirely sure what. Sure, what hit me at the top of that screen, but fortunately that part is over. Now I need to keep damage up on the boss. And when everything is kind of off, I like to use those homing missiles, but you'll see that these rock walls obviously get in the way, so whenever I have a decent opportunity, you have a limited number of those homing missiles. And this guy will just continue to shield himself, so. get a good spot to shoot from. Point just trying to avoid things. Just trying not to get hit. Cannot imagine doing that on the hardest difficulty. Yeah, it's about to get pretty intense. Just trying to get any of these missiles through that I can. Just do some extra damage. And as things are going to kind of get crazy in the final seconds here. Back to the opening and get it down. That's going to be a massive improvement to my score. And we'll see how many upgrade points we get just to kind of give you an idea of what you can pick up from. And now you can see huge improvement in the score compared to 30,000. Picked up an extra 500,000 points in that, but you get 309 energy points. So here we have the upgrade screen. You can see that 300 some points is a lot. In fact, I can do a lot of these upgrades. First thing I want to pick up is actually the salvo, which is only 50 points. And this is the one I talked about, double the fire rate of air to surface projectiles. So I feel like that's a strong improvement like to pick this one up, but it's not available yet. I must have to unlock some other things first. 
I think with that, I'll pick up the homing. That'll just make targeting a little bit easier when they get those giant clusters of enemies. And from here, I'm going to go down and pick up some extra homing missiles because those are so useful for the bosses. And I can actually upgrade that twice. So that's what I'm going to do with my points for now. Overall, I see a ton of improvements just with replaying those levels. Now, I do want to mention that I did receive a free copy of this product from Keymailer, and that's a program in which you can acquire these keys and check out the games prior to the release. So if you're seeing this video, this game actually releases tomorrow. If you watch this video at any point after it's been out for 24 hours, the game's available now. So check this out. It's been a ton of fun. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.